and welcome to Homekeepers. Come right on in, friends. So glad to be here today. So glad you're there. Always have all this faith that there's going to be a lot of new viewers. Uh, so if you're out there, I want you to know how welcome you are. Come right on in. This is Homekeepers. Sometimes I get mail for homemakers and housekeepers and all, but Homekeepers is just loaded with meaning. Um, we need somebody to really keep the home and, and it can also be used as a gatekeeper which was prominent in scripture we need somebody at the gates of our homes uh, you know keep the pornography out keep all the slop and the filth of this world keep it out of there so um, the term homekeepers is loaded with uh, meaning and it's important that uh, we begin to think in those uh, that way you know that this is more than just a house that this is absolutely something ordained by God. Well, I got a little sermon in there. But my guest I'm excited about, because Ruth Schofield is with us. She was on the last show, and she uh, moved to Washington, D.C. many years ago. Uh, the Lord called her there for a purpose, and the Lord has used her. And it's nothing really for her to walk the halls of Congress, and she knows a lot of them, and she has uh, prayer meetings, and she knows who prays there, and... And we get a lot of bad news, but the good news is there's a lot of good people in Congress, in the Senate, and they pray and seek the will of the Lord. Today I want to talk to her about something I've been aware of a long time, and I, I've tried to get a real expert on the show to talk about it and haven't been able to yet, and that's religious liberty. Because while you're going your way and you're playing with your little devices and Pokemon or whatever you do, our religious liberties are being chipped away. And uh, it's very prominent for, you know, for someone like myself, I get a lot of information on my desk being a television producer. But I uh, really like to warn you because when it is gone, that's when you wake up and say, what happened? Well, Ruth can tell you what's happening right now and what we can do about it. And I'm going to join Stephanie for a wonderful recipe because there's not any kind of squash I don't love. I don't care how you fix it. I love squash, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, and uh, the kind that had the hook, whatever that is. Um, we're going to put together a casserole that uh, it's got uh, a lot of egg whites in it. It's going to make it really fluffy and soft and light. So I'll join her for that. After I tell you again one more time uh, and offer you one more time this book, Praying God's Word by Beth Moore. So many of you are well aware of her ministry and uh, her, her travels, her preaching, and also her books. She's authored many books, but probably none more important than praying the Word of God. And uh, this should improve your prayer life. There are levels of prayer. There are things that don't pray for, you know, you won't get it. Can't bargain with God. There's a lot of things you need to know about prayer. And when you do... Uh, the return is going to be a lot better when we do it God's way. So remember the disciples said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. And he did. And this book will teach you as well. So if you would like a copy of it, we'd be glad to send it to you for that gift of at least $20. Includes your shipping and handling. And I'm very confident that's going to make a big difference in your Christian walk and your prayer life and all that. So... If you use a credit card or debit card, it's 1-800-229-0059. Or the address is on your screen. That's box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Hi, Steph. Hi, how are you? I ought to tell the people about something. Stephanie called me in my office the other day just howling with laughter. Uh, and we don't mention any names. Okay. No names. I don't know what you're talking well, about Well, it's a yet. message you got on Facebook. Oh, so do you want to tell the people what you got? So I just got a message saying that um, this woman would love to give, but she heard that we earn six-figure salaries <laughs> and that she wouldn't be able to donate. I, I just, I honestly, I messaged her back. I said, I promise you there is not one single person here at CTN that, that earns a six-figure salary. No. I'm not sure where she heard it, but no. Uh, yeah, I'll set the record straight. In fact, I've been in Christian television almost 40 years mm -hmm. and there are a few people and they get a lot of publicity not here no not here mm -hmm. our 
our founder's never taken a penny salary here. Mm -mm. Our president and founder does not take a salary. He no. does not take a paycheck. But there are people, and you've read about them, they got big houses and big cars and all that. And But for the most part, Christian television people, probably their salaries are a little bit under them. Yes. So that's not us. We yeah, just want you to us. know. And I'm, you know, I'm the president secretary. I just <laughs> do this for fun for Earthling. Yeah. This is not a... This is just no, for she, fun. She, yeah, right. Okay, so, so anyway, mm -hmm. this recipe So we is don't make six figures. Acorn squash mm -hmm. souffle. What was the other one I couldn't think of? Um, it's acorn and, and butternut. Butternut, yeah. That's Sent to me by my husband's former wife. Can I show you two pictures real quick? Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. so because she sent it and her name's Melody and if we're talking about her, I want people to see her face. So this, yeah. we went on vacation together. This is weird. It's not weird, it, it's fine. Yeah. You know? Uh, my husband couldn't go on vacation one time, so we took our girls and we went on vacation. And then the next picture is at our son's wedding. Yeah, so and you Melody. know what? What is that? It really is a good thing. Yes, if there's not this. It's, it's good for the kids. It's good for everybody. So thank you, Melody. It's I have not a feeling it's going to be so good. Okay, so we simply took butternut squash and acorn squash. We peeled it, and by we, I mean Susan. Uh -huh. She cut it up in small pieces and she boiled it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we separated four eggs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the yolks. Here's the whites that we fluffed that's, up. That's what makes it's it It's very important you don't get any of the yolk in the white because it won't fluff. We don't use this at all. Yes, we do. We do. Oh. I'm doing this. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're simply going to take the butternut and the acorn squash that was cut up, um, chopped up, and boiled. Okay? And we're just going to mix that up real quick. Now, uh, should, should the uh, dish be greased? You're going to, yes. You're di so you're, that's what I do. That's your job. Okay, let's... Let's pause a moment for this beautiful thing because it's, it's fine. It's so gorgeous. I love it. I love pretty dishes. Yeah, and this, uh, you take it right out of the oven and um, put it in the stand and it goes right to the table. Yeah. I, I love pretty um, I love dishes. pretty dishes. Mm -hmm. So this one, because you see food before you taste it, mm -hmm. and it, you want to see food in something beautiful. Yeah, so I brought this from home mm -hmm. for our viewers to enjoy. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. Yes, ma'am. Over the sink. Okay, so acorn squash, butternut squash mixed. So then I'm taking sugar. Yeah, I wouldn't put, oh, well, you did. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't put all <laughs> I, that I in. I left a little bit in here. I read, a, I read an article Cinnamon? that says you can use a whole lot less sugar than a, and it doesn't affect the recipe. So this one Vanilla? I would probably cut in half if I do it. Ginger. Mm hmm. Ooh. Heavy cream. Take. What? Oh, I just made a big mess. That was really full. Mm. And the egg yolks. Okay. Oh, that's where that goes. Yep, I'm going to mix this up real quick. Oh, man, is this Seriously. ever going to be good? And this, you know, it sounds like a really, when you're reading it, you're like, oh, my gosh, this recipe. But it's su it's really super simple. And, Melody, you can do it, I promise. I told her I'd send her the link to this because she wants to make it, but she wanted to see it be it's made a, first. It's a recipe to, uh, oh. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, slow it down, sister. Slow it's it down. It's a recipe that looks like it came from a very high-end restaurant. Well, you know, this recipe was recipe of the month at the Dillard House. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, it looks it looks impressive. That's okay, for sure. now I'm going to take the egg whites that were whipped. Mm -hmm. Let's move that's this. what makes it fluffy, right there. Right, and I'm Light. just folding this in gently. Just folding it in gently. And when you whip those egg whites, you just put the egg whites in there and you just beat them up until you pull the beater up and you have a peak. Yeah. You sprayed the pan. I'm just simply going to pour it in the pan, and then you bake it. Do you like squash as much as I do? I mean, spaghetti um, squash, if you ever did? I don't know I have, if I've ever had it, to be honest with really? you. Really? No. So this, I'm going to actually taste this. Yes. So just fold it in. And you can get that one out of the oven if you want. Yeah, will. now. Um, Carefully. It should be a little bit. The coconut should be toasted. The coconut we, should be kind of toasty. Yeah, we kind of um, made that decision at the of, end because you don't really like toasted coconut, right? I know, but I thought it would look prettier. It would be prettier, oh. and it's going to add another layer of flavor. Uh-huh. Okay, I have made a complete and unbelievable mess, but let's see. Oh, this look is so this. fluffy. Now, and then the, you bake it, and then the coconut goes on it. Yeah. And, we'll um, get all that out later. And actually, if you couldn't make up your mind like I couldn't, we could have uh, put that under we the could, broil. Yeah, we could have toasted the, the coconut or mm -hmm. put it on and, yeah, look at that. So, look in this dish. Uh-huh. 
That's so super hot. I see now, the steam. Please be careful. this kind of thing, could you make it ahead of time? Because would those egg whites go? Yeah, I'm not so sure I would make it too far ahead of time. I wouldn't like make that's it hot. and freeze it. Yeah, that's super hot. Look, you can see the steam. Oh, it's just gorgeous, though. Is it good? Oh. Is it? <laughs> I... oh, that wow. is delicious. Mm -hmm. It's like cotton candy. <gasps> that's really, really so good. Mmm. The cinnamon, the ginger. That's delicious. You want this one. Look yep. That. Yep. You can see the steam. Because if we think you don't want it, we tell you. But you do, you do want this one. And, of course. Oh, my gosh. That's really delicious. Uh -huh. it's, I like it a lot. And, it's, and you can do this, Melody. I have faith. It melts in your mouth. It does. It really does. Okay. If you want this, the information is coming up on your screen. And... Um, Email us, Wanda will send it to you, or if you don't have a computer, just send us a little envelope, and we'll be glad to send it back to you. Now, I hope you saw Ruth uh, Schofield on the last program, uh, but if not, you have the opportunity to meet her today and hear what she has to say, and I think she has some of the most important things to say that's ever been on this program, so stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. It's a joy for me to welcome Ruth Schofield back to Homekeepers, <coughs> talking about things that are great, great, great interest to me. Please let me get a drink here. And I know you are an author. I have a couple of your books here. Power of the King's Fire and Power of the King's Scepter. Are these your newest ones? These uh, are three years old. I'm working uh, on finishing up the third book. It's a series. It's called <clears throat> The Power of the King series. And I wrote these uh, teaching books is really what they are, Bible teaching books, because mm -hmm. I used to be on television as a Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. And I have a real passion for people learning the Word and learning what the Word does in their life. And of course, the most important uh, gifts that we have are the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and the blood of Jesus. So I'm finishing up on the uh, blood covenant of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm very impressed that you could write on a, uh, about a scepter and a book that big. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> You must really got to the detail on that. Actually, <coughs> that book is bigger because mm -hmm. it has a prayer guide in the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, for years, we had uh, a book of scriptures to pray at our embassy, our prayer embassy. And a lot of our prayer warriors that would come and go would say, Ruth, you need to put that in a book. So mm -hmm. there it is. Well, on the last program, uh, we kind of talked about your ministry, but we probably have some new viewers today. And so to recap it, um, the Lord, you believe, really called you to Washington, D.C. Was it in the 70s? Uh, I came uh, to Washington, D.C. in the mid-80s. It was in the 70s that I uh, launched uh, television from my youth ranch in Florida. Actually, I was preaching on radio and television mm -hmm. and uh, moved to Atlanta for a few years to expand that television. And the Lord spoke to me while I was in Atlanta to go to Washington. And uh, the real mission was to reach the nation and raise up Christians, wake them up, get them praying. Um, you know, that's our number one uh, role in Washington, D.C., is mm. prayer. You know, what do you do when you first get there? Uh, the Lord's calling, oh, what do I do now? You know. Well, I knew it was <coughs> television. Mm. And, of course, I knew I wasn't going to do Bible teaching from Washington. I didn't realize, though, I would get that involved in the government. Uh, it was step by step. You know, when you uh, follow the Lord, it's you just step into yeah. the steps, footsteps of Jesus and you find out where you're going. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it was Stormy O'Mardian who wrote a book called <clears throat> Just Enough Light for the Step I'm On. Yes. He doesn't yeah. really give you the big picture. Well, he's a lamp to our feet, and that lamp, you know, in the, in the Old Testament didn't go that far. Mm -hmm. Now we have lamps mm -hmm. that do. 
but uh, the light uh, and, and the glory uh, of the Lord needs to uh, shine in Washington, D.C. And Arthelene, truthfully, I believe it does. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear more about uh, the dark side. We hear more about what isn't good. But uh, there is a tremendous amount of power in Washington, D.C. for God's side. The light and the glory are there. And I happen to know the author, um, the two authors, really, of The Light and the Glory and The uh, Sea from Shining Sea. Is that Peter um, Marshall? Peter Marshall, Jr. He, he, his official name isn't Jr., but everybody calls him Peter Marshall, Jr. Mm -hmm. And then uh, David Manuel, who really was the ghost writer of those books, mm -hmm. uh, they've both been to my prayer embassy. Um, in Washington, and um, they are, you know, they're in heaven right now. They just passed away the past couple of years. Really? I didn't know yes, that. Yes, they weren't far apart. Because I've had Peter, I've interviewed him a couple times many yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he uh, has been a tremendous uh, yes. example for um, really w renewal and awakening. That was his mm -hmm. uh, thrust was wake up America. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to our roots. And, you know, speaking of our roots, it was the founding fathers that gave us all of this heritage. Mm -hmm. And it was a covenant with God. And I've enjoyed uh, writing this book on the blood covenant, which I have taught a, a really halfway around the world in India and Africa. Mm -hmm. But um, it was, you know, the covenant with God is, is based on that blood covenant. And mm -hmm. we are uh, accountable to keeping that covenant with God. And that's why uh, the word of God is so important in our mm -hmm. lives. I, I mentioned uh, on the last program that I've spoken around there a lot, and everybody works for the government in Virginia yes. and, and all around there. Yes. And uh, there's something about being that close to the seat of power. There, there's really something very special about that. And I've been aware of it. I've tried to kind of uh, let the viewers know. Uh, but we, they're really chipping away at our religious liberties. And oh, I, yes. think, I think most Christians have no idea. Well, how close to the edge that we are. Right. We really are. And, of course, this year will make the difference. If we don't turn the tide this year, mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll have another opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to have to bear and grin and, uh, you know, Maranatha, come Lord. But actually, uh, we want to make sure that we are pleasing to the Lord. Are we being stewards? Are we uh, standing on the wall? Um, I uh, subscribe a lot to Ann Graham Lotz, who I've met in Washington several times. She has a, a powerful prayer movement going on with the Daniel prayer. Mm -hmm. And that's a prayer of urgency. Uh, Daniel prayed for 21 days and he fasted uh, during that time. And he didn't leave. He didn't know it was going to be for 21 days. He was committed if it had to go to 40 or 120. Mm -hmm. But the Lord answered. The uh, angel uh, Gabriel got through uh, for the uh, 21 days and said, God has answered your prayers. But we need those kind of prayers right now. And we need to cry out to God. In Second Chronicles 7:14, we need to humble ourselves. We need to pray and seek God's face. And we need to forsake our own wicked ways. You say, well, we're Christians. We no, don't no, have it's wicked the wicked ways. ways of the church. <laughs> turn and turn from their wicked ways. And he was talking about God's people. He's talking to God's people. And then he will hear us. And then he will heal our land. Our land needs healing. When I drive around Washington, I... Uh, go uh, around the Potomac a lot because of how you need to weave in and out of the city there and around the city. And I see the blood of all those aborted children floating in that Potomac River. You know, it's just a vision I have. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, it's there, it's present, it's not going away. And, uh, you know, God would um, have to judge our nation if we don't turn the corner. I know. I, they might be th think I'm crazy, but um, Abel's blood cried out from the ground. Yes. And uh, we have soaked our ground. We filled our rivers and our oceans with the blood of, in America, All 50 across million. the nation. 50 million. Yes. So, and, um, and you know, it's, it's really changing the Supreme Court is what is important. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, we're electing new officials uh, every several years and every four years we uh, vote for the White House. But actually, we need uh, people in government and in the White House that will uh, appoint the proper uh, Supreme Court justices yep. that have the right values. Yeah, and that will uh, live by the Constitution. Yeah. The Supreme Court's taken a lot of liberties and things they never should have taken. Yes, and checks and balances are really supposed to take care of that, but we have lost our checks and balances. Mm -hmm. We need to return back to the Constitution. And, of course, you know, there's a, a progressive, they call themselves progressive on the left side. Mm -hmm. It's really socialism. Uh, they want to uh, lean that country, this country, away from the Constitution. It's really worse than socialism. Yes, it is. Now, on this show, I addressed, and I can't remember all the details, where the military in their chapels or whatever, taking down crosses and uh, telling, pe telling women who were going there, you know, to comfort and so forth, that they couldn't pray. And I kept putting a light on this, but there was one congressman, just one congressman from Texas that blew that thing out of the water. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this was a military cemetery. You know, I think of any branch of government, the military <laughs> would want God to be on their side, yeah. you know. But is it not true that in the military, Religious liberties are being chipped away at oh, yes. a very fast pace. Right. Well, they have a new handbook that came out a year ago. Um, they have a new handbook on uh, religious guidelines, and it is uh, you can't have a Bible on your desk, you can't put scripture up. Uh, people have been court martialed for these things. Well, can they put a Koran on their desk? Uh, well, I don't know. But they could. I, I imagine they could, because it is Christianity that the hostility is toward. And you say, well, why any, you know, why isn't any religion pushed back then? It, it's all a part of, it's, it's a plan and mm -hmm. there's a purpose behind it. It's right out of hell. Yes, it is. Yes, it's, and, and speaking of that, it is a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, uh, the Apostle Paul taught us the spiritual battle. And we need to pray first and we need to take action as well and we need to educate other Christians. You know, I see a lot of people uh, going going to church on Sunday and then going home and just minding their own business, going to work and staying in their own houses. But you need to educate your neighbors as to what's going on because it's going to affect everyone if we lose more freedoms. And so many of them, when they're lost, they'll look around and say, what happened? Yes, what, exactly. What happened? Yeah. I, um, I was just thinking when I went to school, I, we might have said the Lord's Prayer, I'm not sure, but uh, there was an open and there was uh, sometimes scripture read and we uh, pledged allegiance to the flag. All through those decades, there were no shootings in school. No. There, there was no slapping the teacher or cursing at the teacher. Yes. And I know in some schools that for the teacher, survival is the order of the day. Yes, it, it is. It is really that bad. Yes. And I've often thought that first one that really got our attention was in Colorado mm -hmm. uh, many years ago, maybe as many as 20 years ago. Yeah. And it's two brothers, and they planned that, and I think 19 or 20 people were killed. Yes. And I thought, you know, what if the Ten Commandments had been on the wall? Oh, yes. That is an anointed word from the Lord. Yes, it and is. And those two animals would have been read, reading every day. Yes. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall, don't tell me it wouldn't have an effect. Right. I, I'm a spokeswoman for the Ten Commandments Commission. And we've been trying to get, uh, every two years, we've been trying to get legislation approved that will uh, enforce the Ten Commandments as the law of the land. It was the law of the land. And I've had some members of Congress tell me on camera when we took the Ten Commandments out of the schools and prayer out of the schools, drugs walked in. Right. And of course now it's Fact. violence and hostility and, and, and even uh, bullying and uh, just degradation. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks, talks a lot about lawlessness in the end times. Yes. And our nation has become lawless. Yes. Um, what is so crazy is, you know, when so, some group gets mad, and they go down and burn their own neighborhood down. 
Yes. Uh, there's things of absolute insanity going on. Right. And that's what happens when you kick God out. Yes, and I believe that's why we have corruption in our government, mm -hmm. is uh, people do not fear the Lord anymore. When we pray for leaders, new leaders to come in, we're watching them come into Washington from grassroots, and we say, Lord, please send God-fearing yeah. leaders in. Have the people vote for God-fearing leaders. And that, you know, without that, you have the corruption in government, and when you have corruption in government, it's lawless. Mm -hmm. They don't obey the law. They break no. the law. They lie and cheat all they can. And it's just not one or two individuals or personalities. But then it's all over. Yeah, people just laugh it off. Yes. That's the way it is. I read in Jeremiah, I'm reading, I read Old Testament, New Testament every morning. I read in Jeremiah, uh, tough book. It's a tough mm -hmm. book. But he was talking about the horrible sin of Judah and everything. It said, if I can remember, it says, were they ashamed because of the abomination they have done? They were not ashamed at all. They did not even know how to blush. Mm. And I, I say yeah. America has forgotten how yes. to blush. Yes, that, that is perfectly it. Right. And of course, Psalm 11, 3 said, if the foundations are destroyed, mm -hmm. what can the righteous mm -hmm. do? You know, if we allow the foundations to actually slide away and erode away and let the liberals do it, then what can we do? Mm -hmm. We don't have any recourse. But I think in this hour, um, it might seem like it's too late, uh, but we need to pray more Gotta than do we, what we have can. ever prayed. Now, I want to have a couple minutes. I was talking about um, how religious liberties are really being chipped away in the military. Yes. What other branch of government do you think it's really noticeable? Well, of course, in education, our schools, our universities, our colleges. Mm -hmm. Right now, Iowa University is struggling to keep, uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but keep the freedom for Christians to speak on campuses. They're not allowed to speak. Mm -hmm. There's a gag rule out there going on that's invisible for uh, against Christians, for them not to be able to speak their freedoms. And well, it's certainly time to wake up. We're almost out of time, but please come back again, will you? Well, thank uh, you. When we get into it's things with more depth, uh, because this, you know, I'm going to be fine. I'm a great grandmother, but I have five grandchildren and eight great grandchildren, and I'm concerned about them growing up in this nation, and I, I believe you are too. So pray, that's what we can do. And we are out of time, but join me next time, please, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.